Cybertron Weekly is your central hub for everything Transformers. Hey guys, Ultra Maximus back with another Transformers review. Today we're taking a look at a huge figure. It's the Combiner Wars Devastator. Now this is the retail version. This is not the San Diego Comic-Con version. That actually looks pretty cool. Uh, it's got the chrome purple on it. Uh, definitely, definitely cool looking figure. This is the one that, well, has been released to the mass market. I did see one of these at the Northside Toys R Us here in Indianapolis, but the box was kind of smashed. And I went back the next day. They wanted $160 for it, $159 plus tax. And uh, it was sold. It was gone like that. And uh, they said the closest Toys R Us that had any was actually in Fort Wayne, Indiana, about two hours away, and they had two of them. So I went to Big Bad Toy Store, and I got this thing shipped for, I think, around $152. So it was actually cheaper to go through Big Bad Toy Store and have it delivered to me in the box is perfect. Um, so that's pretty cool. Front of the package, uh, we've got this awesome artwork of Devastator here. Comes with all six Constructicons. Really reminds me of the old gift set back in the day, which is really cool. Some little Transformers running around at the bottom. It says Transformers here, Generations. Comes with a collector card of Devastator, I think. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Really nice artwork. I'm really digging it. Not really sure who that is. That kind of looks like Ironhide. Um, and that kind of looks like um, Shockwave, actually. And then we got a car flipping around back here and a missile coming in. Uh, kind of interesting. Just kind of a quick close-up. Uh, tell me if it doesn't look like Shockwave. Pretty cool. And that looks like Ironhide to me. If you know any different, tell me. I'm not sure who that is. If you know who that is, let me know. Uh, side of the package just basically has uh, Devastator to there, and this side has nothing. Um, the top of the box has all of the Constructicons, looking super cool. And then here is the top of the package. It's huge! Um, in fact, it doesn't even cover, I think, <laughs> about right here. It's cutting just the head off. Um, it says it's 18 inches and 45 centimeters. This is actual height. Um, it's got all the Constructicons here, which is really cool. And then here's a little write-up, um, just to kind of show you the top of the box. There is the write-up. If you want to pause and read that, you can. And then over here, here are all of the Constructicons. Looking super cool. I am digging this for sure. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open. Today we're going to take a look at so Hook is going back to the G1 style vehicle, which I really do appreciate. And again, just to correct myself for Mixmaster, that is a real styled cement mixer. It's uh, based off an Oshkosh top-loading cement mixer. However, I have never seen one around the Midwest, ever. But just to put that correction out there, ding! All right, so looking at the um, truck crane, mobile crane, whatever you want to call this, um, I like the aesthetic. I like the look, but there's some really big fails for this uh, on me. Number one, the crane does go up a little. However, it doesn't expand out. Why doesn't this thing, this thing should come out like the old figure did. Uh, that's just a huge fail for me. I mean, it should extend out at least, I think, that far. Um, that would have made me very, very happy. Um, there is going to be a fix for that for, I guess, perfect effect is going to fix this piece. It's gonna fix the uh, steam shovel, make it bigger, and then it's gonna put a new cab on Mixmaster to make him look G1, so that's kind of cool. But looking at it, yeah, I, I like the look. I like how it's got the uh, rear cab back here to control the actual crane. Um, it's got the front cab to drive the vehicle. Uh, however, looking at it, while I like all the painted windows here, there's no painted window there. Um, we get a painted window there, none there. If we flip it around to this side, 
lift this up. No painted windows there. That really irritates me. And then no painted window there. Um, th if they would have painted those, much, much better. Um, unfortunately, they did not. We do get some nice detail with the little ladder there, all the molded detail up here. We get some diamond plating here and here, which looks cool. Uh, we get some silver paint picks on the headlights up here. Nice molded detail. like to see a little bit more paint. Um, nice big Decepticon logo. Of course, we get the silver hook uh, at the front. We get a lot of diamond plate back here, which is very cool. Uh, we do get some tail lights and a uh, exhaust pipe, but nothing painted. Uh, been nice to have a little red and some silver there. I think that, that would have been really, really cool. So yeah, the other issue I've got is rolling. I mean, it does roll, but not all that great uh, because he's got these parts. I'm guessing those are his feet um, stuffed up underneath and it just really doesn't like to roll much. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's an okay vehicle. It's a lot better than uh, Mixmaster. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it just uh, that for some reason irritated the crap out of me. Um, I do like to look it just needs a little bit more paint in this crane. Oh, that crane needs to be able to extend out. Other than that, I really, really like this vehicle mode. For size comparison, here we have Hook next to the Generations Night Beat. Here we have Hook next to the Transformers Combiner Wars Wind Charger. And, you know, it might not be a bad scale. These, I think, actually scale up pretty decent with each other. Here we have Hook with the Stunticon Breakneck. And finally, here we have Hook with the Transformers Age of Extinction Galvatron, which is totally just not in scale at all. I think that this should be a little bit smaller compared to this guy. And here we have Hook in his robot mode. And, uh, you know, it's not a bad robot mode. It does have a few faults, but overall, I really do like this mode. Um, I think they did a good job with the head sculpt. Love the body. The color's broken up well between the green, black, and silver paint apps. Um, he's got this humongous hook on his back uh, that just, yeah, it's kind of a third leg. Um, but it poses, stands really well because of it, so that's a positive, I suppose. Uh, but overall, yeah, I, I like this robot mode. Um, transformation on this is relatively simple. There are a couple things that are not so intuitive, uh, mainly around this particular leg here, and did not realize it had elbow joints. And then um, this piece here was a little difficult to get down over his shoulders um, due to a double hinge. I'll kind of talk about that here in a second. But overall, yeah, really nice. Love the head sculpt. Um, he gets elbows, which they're kind of craptastic, but he does get them. Now, one of the nice things is, uh, weapons-wise, since his wrist piece, or his piece there can spin, um, you can take the double blaster and use it as a shield, which is pretty darn awesome. So, you can sit here with a shield, um, which is very cool. I am digging that, and then... Um, if you're going to go that route, you might as well go ahead and give him the little sword blade, um, like that. I, I, I like that. That's actually a pretty good use of those two pieces. Um, definitely fun, definitely cool. Um, it'd probably look better if we used this side, huh? Here's the other blade. Yeah, the other sword. Definitely digging that. Very, very cool. So, yeah. Um, he can use the weapons a little bit better than, uh, or the chest piece, I guess, for Devastator as weapons a little bit better. Um, so, yeah, let's take a look at the robot. I oh, love that head sculpt. Very G1, very cool. Really digging that chest plate. Lots of detail, a lot of paint picks. Definitely digging that. We've got the silver and the red there. Silver on the legs and the green and silver and black. They did a really, really good job, I think, in breaking this guy up as far as the look goes. Um, he does have elbow joints. I thought if you just lock the elbows into place, it looks pretty solid. Um, issue I've got with this is his shoulder bits kind of get in the way at the top, but is what it is. The elbows look like... Uh, Legends class elbows to me, which is kind of craptastic, but uh, at least he's got them unlike uh, some of the other figures and uh, Yeah, uh, as far as transformation goes, so 
This piece here is on a double hinge and it's getting it to go down proper to get it to sit on there. I mean, it just was kind of weird and awkward to do it. Uh, but once it got into the right place, it was fine. The other thing is the legs. So the legs have a double hinge as well where they, the vehicle comes down around these front pieces. This one was perfectly fine. This one, however, I had to find the sweet spot to get it to sit. Otherwise, it'd go too far down and the foot wouldn't sit proper. So just kind of be aware of that when you're transforming it. Um, I will say this feels the thinnest of all the figures I've messed with, especially around these leg pieces here, uh, these joints here, and up here. I just This figure, uh, if a kid gets a hold of it, this is the one that breaks first, guaranteed, because it has a lot of really thin parts. But uh, for an adult collector, I mean, it's fine. Uh, other articulation points, it does have the shoulders can go up and down, wrists don't move. He does have ball joints in his hips that seem pretty stiff, uh, not too terribly bad. And he's got limited motion in his ankles there. So yeah, not, overall, not too bad of a figure. Here we have Hook next to a Transformers Robots in Disguise 2015 One Step Changer Thunderhoof. And he just towers over this dude. Here we have Hook next to a Takara Legends figure, RC, and wow, she looks so tiny compared to this guy. Here he is next to Masterpiece G2 Sideswipe, and I really do dig the scale of these guys next to each other and the fact I think the Constructicons should be bigger than the Autobots, but I think in the show they were really about the same size. Here we have Hook next to Alternator's Prowl. Again, I'm really digging the size between these two in robot mode. I think these work out really, really well. And here we have the Year of the Goat Masterpiece Soundwave. Again, I really do dig the scale on these guys to the Masterpiece, although Soundwave's a little funky because I think that he should be about the same size, but that's okay. This is a really cool figure. And finally, here he is with the Leader Class Megatron from Combiner Wars. Uh, looking really cool together. I love the scale of this Leader Class Megatron to the Constructicons. I think it works out well. And here we have five of the six Constructicons together. Definitely digging the set. Um, I would have to say, so far, he is still my favorite out of the group. He is definitely my least favorite. Um, and then I think probably... Scavenger, then Bone Crusher, then Hook. Um, I don't know. These two are kind of... I kind of like this robot mode look better than this one, but I like this vehicle better than this one. So these are kind of, I don't know, on the fence. But I'm definitely liking the set together as a whole. Cannot wait uh, to take a look at the final figure and get this guy combined. So final thoughts on Hook. You know, I've got mixed feelings on this guy. While I don't think he's the strongest, he's definitely one of the weaker of the Constructicons that we've seen so far. He is better than Mixmaster, I think. Um, just in the fact that at least he's got the G1 style vehicle mode uh, and uh, his robot mode does look really cool, but there are some faults to it. Like I said, I wish the crane here would extend out in vehicle mode. I'd like to see a little bit more paint apps in vehicle mode. And then uh, in robot mode here, there's some pretty thin joints like at the elbows, up around the shoulders, and around the legs. I just feel like that uh, if any of my figures are going to break, this is the one that's going to break first. Fortunately, um, you know, he's going to go into Devastator mode, just kind of stay there. I also kind of wish this crane would fold up somehow, uh, but it's kind of a double-edged sword because it does give really nice balance to the figure. I mean, he stands up perfectly well because he's got that third leg <laughs> sitting there. Uh, but overall, not a bad figure. So there he is, Hook from Combiner Wars. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumbs it up. If you hate this video, thumbs it down. To watch more Ultra Maximus, click on the links to the right. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And as always, look for more videos in the future.